This is the, the linked data in the ALMA 2022 roadmap. This is part of our ongoing series on the ALMA 2022 roadmap. Many of you I see here have already been in our previous sessions. And I just want to remind everybody that everything that we have here is on the page which deals with the ALMA 2022 roadmap. Uh, this is the page here, and I will send out the link here, the ALMA 2022 roadmap webinar series. This link here I will send out now in the chat just to look at the bird's eye view of where we are and where we're going. Uh, this is an ongoing series to notify the community of what we're doing, what we're planning, in many cases, what we've already done. We've already had a session on the library independence theme in the ALMA 2022 roadmap, uh, dealt primarily with letters and fulfillment. There's more involved in that. Then we had a session on the control digital lending, where we focus primarily on the patron waitlist for CDL control digital lending. Then we had a session on the catalog analysis best practices, where we talked about the staff search, the indication rules, the new form for the indication rules, the physical holding search. And that brings us today, March 14th, to the linked open data theme for the ALMA 2022 roadmap. All of the presentations which we'll be using today, as well as a link to the official linked open data page for the roadmap appear here, so everybody can access that. I'm going to send this out today now to everybody, all attendees, everybody, so everybody has that link if for whatever reason you don't already have it. And we're joined today by with Itai Veltzman, Director of Product Management. Itai will begin talking about the roadmap themes, and then I'm going to go in and talk about what we've already got on linked data and how it can be used. So without further ado, Itai, I'm going to turn this over to you. And if anyone has any questions or comments, send them in in the chat. Sometimes people get confused. There's a Q&A. There's also the chat. Please use the chat. We will also check the Q&A, but just so we have everything uh, in one area, please send in your questions or comments in the chat. But we will be checking both of them. And Itai, I am making you the presenter. Take it away. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and share just a second the right screen. OK. You're supposed to see it now. Yeah, we see you. OK. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy you join us. And thank you for your time. I'll dive right away. And I'll start a remind, a quick reminder of why we are doing it or why we are dealing and thinking about link open data. Uh, eventually, what we are looking is to provide, as always, as was through the history of librarian is to provide the ability to, for uh, the different uh, user, patron, researcher, and so on to find the resource they want. When we are dealing and talking about uh, um, link open data, we are referring to a global metadata system uh, that is actually a multi-system ecosystem of many systems that uh, correlate together in order to provide in a much better and easier way uh, this access uh, to all resources, all existing resources. Actually, already today, when we're talking about semantic web search, and uh, uh, which is the foundation for the link open data technology, is eventually uh, the ability to crawl, to walk through uh, the different uh, elements of information uh, with the, all the different relations uh, and the links between them. In this example, you can see the painter Van Gogh and uh, uh, all related his uh, place of birth uh, and other people that uh, was influenced uh, and so on his relation. And that's already actually exists out there today uh, and it's being used. 
Until today, uh, and this is a, a, a LD4P uh, slide, um, mostly uh, li libraries use the MOOC uh, uh, format uh, and other uh, related uh, format, but eventually it's a, a dedicated uh, proprietary format of the libraries only. And it shut uh, down uh, uh, from the external wor uh, world and the other system. Uh, non-library uh, system. And actually one of the important things moving to link open data is to remove that barrier, to open uh, the data to other system, uh, to make uh, interoperability possible in a much easier way. So when we are looking on the link data in libraries, we are looking on, on three ma major pillars. Uh, we're talking about efficient cataloging and uh, creating uh, higher accuracy when you're cataloging, doing a regional catalog with less uh, manual work uh, and creating those relationships that are very important to make it much easier. And we're looking on original cataloging we're talking uh, mainly on special collection and unique materials. As I mentioned, and that's a, a, a central pillar here, it's a better discovery, meaning you can see more information, you can navigate and, and crawl to the relevant uh, resources uh, that are connected to the ones uh, you are looking at and make it uh, easier and, and more uh, to know what you don't know. It's actually uh, what's helping you. And as mentioned, the interoperability, which is very open to open the whole uh, library system uh, to the external world. As I mentioned, uh, Alma is part and will be part of a, a growing metadata ecosystem uh, of link open data, as you see here, uh, and many are mentioned. And uh, we believe that uh, there's no one single system that uh, uh, can do everything. It's a combination of system that can help and create this ecosystem. I won't really do too much of what uh, Alma is doing because Yoel will do it uh, uh, in more details, uh, but already exists a lot of aspect uh, that we are talking about. If it's the ability to publish, ability to access via API, the ability to uh, catalog using the Alma Refine uh, and many other important elements. So what we are focused on 2022, which is happening right now, we're actually in the process of it. First is the ability to have link open data, uh, you might call it records, graph, and other uh, way, inside Alma, uh, being able to reach it, perform searches, using it as fulfillment workflows, and other uh, basic workflows that we are talking. That's something that already is on the move and it's being developed uh, and it's relatively straightforward because Alma is a multi-format system. Also, we are uh, working together uh, mainly now with Synopia, but we are open to any other uh, suggestion and editors that exist there uh, to work with them as well. Uh, and that's to uh, integrate a third party link uh, data editor. In that, matter, in that matter, Synopia is already, we are working closely with them in order to make it possible to use their editor and send uh, the record to Alma and store it and from there continue and, and use it. Just a quick uh, sneak peek of uh, uh, what you can see. Uh, and here it's an example of a title that exists as a link uh, open data and graph in our in database. And uh, that's something that is important to mention that already today Alma uh, store and refer to many relations between uh, titles, between titles and authorities. Uh, so have, we have all the mechanism to uh, hold this uh, link inside the system. And you can see here, you can see the record itself as a simple view as the main view. We are looking also beyond because a link open data implementation is a long-term 
uh, vision and it's a journey that has started already many years ago and it's continue uh, and more intense. We're looking on uh, info cards which are uh, given the enrichment. I can indicate also that uh, in 2022 uh, Primo is actually already uh, planning to implement uh, and add uh, out of the box the ability to show info cards based on link open data uh, that is coming and the enrichment that is coming from Alma. It's something we are working together closely uh, uh, on different aspects. We're also referring to the ability to import like any other formats. Uh, we are looking forward uh, to create and, and talk about a new link open data editor that uh, will help uh, to actually do uh, um, as part of Alma and WT2 Editor and as part of library solution in general. And the last and not least is the moving from the concept of just authorities to, to identify uh, entities to actually entities that are managed, something that already uh, is being moving forward with a project like Wikidata. Uh, so I think, Joel, that's uh, my cue. Uh, I just uh, okay, great. My last slide, and uh, you are welcome to continue your important part. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, thanks a lot, Itai. All right, so let me share here, and we're going to jump right into Alma. Okay. There we go. All right, so just a very, very brief before we get into Alma. Why, as Itai mentioned, why are we even talking about linked data in the first place? Uh, it's a fancy buzzword, but uh, it's more than just a fancy buzzword. It's not just an academic exercise that Ex Libris has said, what can we do with linked data because everybody's talking about it. It's something that can be used to help the end user, and we're going to see examples of that, in finding data. Uh, it's, it enhances the search results. Instead of just getting one work by one author which was searched for, you can click a link, as we're going to see in one second, see everything else created by the author, see other works created by people with that author, and it's interactive. Uh, these are some samples of some of the data that comes in currently via the link data. As you can see, it's coming from WorldCat, it's coming from ISBN Search, VIAF. Recently, we also brought in the authorities for the official Taiwan link data page, and we're going to see that as well. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Library of Congress. This is a uh, a visual of what happens here. A person searches, finds an author, finds, finds a work of some sort, from there crawls to another area, has a link, crawls to another area. Here they're starting at VIAF, then they get to Library of Congress, then they get to Wikidata. So let's look now at two examples of real linked data. And we're going to start with University of Wisconsin. Then we're going to go to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And I'm going to stop the PowerPoint, even though you all have access to this and you too can do the same. So let's go to the University of Wisconsin. And this is fully open. We're not going in somewhere that anybody won't find. Uh, this is their primo right now. So we'll pop into University of Wisconsin and let's begin. And like the example here, we'll search for, by the way, there's also a link to a blog in this presentation that University of Wisconsin has written explaining what they've done. So let's go look for Gloria Steinem, feminist extraordinaire. I'm in a standard primo here. Just going to make sure I spell this properly. Extraordinaire. Ordinaire. Okay. And let's put that in the title and submit. So University of Wisconsin has taken the linked data, which we're going to see soon how they get it, 
and they've put it into the catalog here. So I find my result, I go to the full view, and then if we scroll down here, we've got various links, among them what they have called information from the web. And if we open the information from the web, we have Gloria Steinem here. Now we're viewing the linked data from various sources. For example, they've taken from DBpedia the biography or the abstract of this work. A user could go right to the source here and view where it was taken from. We'll just let that load a moment. There we go. So this has been embedded inside here. Then they've also taken from Wikidata some biographical information. And again, the user could go right into that source coming from Wikidata. When we look in our next part of this presentation on using APIs to bring linked data, we're going to see these sources in the, in the API. So here, this information from Wikidata has been embedded inside the search results of Primo. Uh, same thing here, then they've got film appearances, again, with all different kinds of sources. And as well, identities on the web. Here we've got from Library of Congress, here we've got from VIAF, here we've got from Wikidata, and here we've got from DBpedia. So all of these are sources from the linked data that are aiding the end user who has searched for a specific work and from here gathers additional information. Here we've got all the information on uh, Gloria Steinem. Here we've got more about Gloria Steinem with links to additional works. Uh, Wikidata, various uh, links to more works, more information about the biography, and same with the DBpedia. So that's an example from the University of Wisconsin. Let me just get rid of these so we don't have a million tabs open by the end of the day. And here as well I'll get out and hide the metadata editor. Now let's go take a look at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And again, I'm going slightly fast, but you all have the access to this presentation, which is showing exactly what I'm doing, so you can also do it on your own. Now we'll go to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and take a look for Lean In, Woman Work, and the Will to Lead, a classic by Sheryl Sandberg and Neil Scovell. It, let's pop in there. So we'll go to Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, Standard Primo, and we'll perform our search. Okay, here we go. We'll search for this in the library catalog. Go. Okay, again, uh, we'll go to the full view. And here we've got what they call a knowledge card. Uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison, if you recall a moment ago, called it information from the web. Here, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology is calling it the knowledge card. If we stick the, uh, click the knowledge card again, Sources like we saw at University of Wisconsin, and, and there's multiple institutions. I've, I've just chosen two, but there's multiple institutions who have done similar things. Uh, so here we've got they, what they call the knowledge card from Wikidata. Then they've got the author itself with a link to uh, Library of Congress name authority file, the VIAF, uh, Wikidata, then they've taken the other author, there's multiple authors here, Neil Scovell and Cheryl Sandberg, done the same with her. You can go a, a direct link to titles, and that's performing a, an, another activity here inside 
the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and all of these links, the end user can come like we saw at University of Wisconsin-Madison and see the results. Here, it's taking that same author, I'm gonna do that again. From here, if we click titles, it's performing another search inside the catalog and bringing the link data. So other works other than Lean In, which we just saw, it's also bringing up this one here, this one here, others as well. So from one search, clicking the link data, you immediately can access other similar titles, other titles by the same author, other information by the author. And everybody's invited to follow the PowerPoint and do the same, because we're gonna move on due to our time. But I'm just clicking here, the cards, the titles, they did a very nice job here, uh, and get, gathering more information. Now let's see how does an institution get that linked data? And there are multiple ways. First, let's close these. Okay, so the linked data can be accessed. I'm gonna to go to the table of contents because there I've got it all in one shot. The linked data can be accessed multiple ways. Uh, via APIs is one way. Via a general publishing profile is another way. And it can be viewed directly in Alma from the repository search, from the record view, and from the metadata editor. And we're gonna show all three of those. And we're gonna start with two examples of getting the data from an API. So let's go down there to getting the data from the API and look at the examples. So in order to be able to use an API for linked data, the institution has to have a linked data integration profile. Let's go take a look at that. I'm gonna to go to configuration on the bottom left and to general and to integration profiles. As those who deal with integration profiles know, here I've got all of the different integration profiles. Can sort them by type and I'm gonna get the one for linked data. And here we are, this is my linked data integration profile. It's a very simple profile. All it has to do is exist and be active. There are no uh, configurations. You don't have to integrate with a third party. All you have to do is create it and check the active box. And that's all we've done here. So because I have this, I can now uh, access linked data of my from my bibliographic records via an API. That's the only prerequisite. And let's take a look at a couple of examples. This is going to be the format of getting the linked data. It's a hard-coded URL, which is this. Then it's the name of the institution or the institution code, not the name, the code. Then, in the case of JSON LD, that's JSON format, link data. Then there's also a format in bib frame. Then there's a format in RDA. Each of them follows this syntax and then the MMS ID. So, for example, if we want this record here, better data visualizations, a guide for scholars, all we have to do is take this syntax and instead of this MMS ID, let's even do it right here. I'm gonna change it on the spot. All we have to do is put in the MMS ID here. I'm gonna change anywhere I have this to this. I'm just gonna make sure I don't have that extra space because one time I did this and it wasn't working and I was going crazy until I realized it's I had a space, okay. So we don't want that to happen. Then we put in the institution code. Now I have an institution code that's a little different than a typical one because I'm in a Ex Libris demo environment, but my code is this. So 
So all I'm doing here, as you see, is replacing the institution code and the MMS ID. And these, if I stick these in my browser now, or if I use a client, an API client, I could do that as well, but I'm going to keep it simple. Okay, let's make sure we're not having anything we shouldn't be there. Same thing here. These should now, let's make sure I don't have spaces. All right. These should now bring me that record in open linked open data. In this case, I'm going to have JSON linked open data. JSON is the format. Let's take a look. I'll stick that in my browser. And there we go. Beautiful. So let's go look at the record on the one hand, and then we're going to go look at the linked data and see what's happening here. So the record, let me get the MMS ID here. By the way, I've got all this all ready to go in case we didn't have enough time. I've got links directly already made, but I, I on purpose want to show how easy it is. All you have to do is take that syntax, replace your MMS ID and your institution code, and you're good to go. So let me go get that MMS ID so we'll be able to see it on the one hand in Alma and on the other hand via the API. So we're going to go look at this record now via an API and link data. So we've got here a bunch of ISBNs, we've got an author, and we've got a couple of subjects. If we go look here now, here's our ISBNs. So we could take this, implant it into my Primo search results, make links, make all kinds of things. And if I open this, it's going to bring me, in this case, to the ISBN search. Let me just get this. Uh, there we go. Oops, sorry about that. The WebEx thing always covers on top. There we go. So I just got to tell them I'm not a robot. So it's going to open now. Waiting. Wait. There we go. So it opens up the record with that ISBN. We could also do it by uh, the record directly from WorldCat. We're also bringing that in the link data. So that's going to open also another tab here directly to WordCat. And this is also something that we could have displayed as a link in the research results in Primo. Then we've also got information about the author or authors. Here's one link to the Library of Congress uh, name authority files. Here's another one for the FAST subject. That's the vocabulary for visual analytics. Here's one from WorldCat for the topic, for the subject. So all of these now can be displayed. This is the author. All of these can be displayed as links inside Primo. So that's for the JSON LD. That's the one that's typically used when somebody is using a link inside Primo. But let's go take a look also at the bib frame. And we're not going to get into the intricacies of what is bib frame and the bib frame format, et cetera, here. Suffice for our purposes to say via this API, uh, uh, the Chrome doesn't, Chrome is a little over strict on that. Let's go here. Uh, hmm, interest. Oh, I got a space. Human error. It's never an Alma error. It's a human error. You see that? Okay. So here we've got the bib frame. Again, it's bringing the information on the vocabulary from the Library of Congress. Then we've got um, more information about the vocabularies, et cetera, et cetera. This is the standard bib frame format, which we're not going to go into the depth on. But for example, here, it's taken the author. It's added a URI. We're going to talk more about adding the URIs, by the way. Uh, later in the session, and this can be displayed however someone would like, however they want to use the bib frame, and that will directly bring more information about the author, in this case from the Library of Congress. Then let's take a look also at the RDA. 
Let's hope I don't have any extra spaces in here. I'll pay a little more attention this time when I paste. And that looks, nope, I think I got a space here. Yes, I do. Okay, so now we're looking at the RDA format. We will look at the RDA, there we go. So now we got RDA, again, links to all of the different types of links. Here we're looking at subject in the Library of Congress. Let's just go take a look at that example. And let's stay in this one, paste that, and this will bring us the subject. Again, something we could make exposable, well, we could expose it in the search results of Primo. Let's take a look at one more example, but only for the JSON-LD. We get the point already that we can do it for JSON-LD and for Big Frame and for RDA. Let's now take a look at a second example. Here, I'm going to go right into the MMS ID. This one is a little different, and I'll explain why in a moment. We'll search for this MMS ID. And I'm going to open this one in the metadata editor first. And we see here, this is linked to the official Taiwan authority files for linked data. And that's one we added fairly recently. And let's go take a look at this one. So here, you'll have to forgive me. Instead of copying, pasting, and showing how the URL is built, we already saw how we can do that. I'm just going to link right in here. But we can see here in the URL, again, it's using the same syntax. Open NA hosted ex libris group com slash Alma, the name of the institution, Bibs, the, the MMS ID, dot JSON LD. And again, we have all of the different authorities here, including what's a new one for this one is the link data NCL EDU Taiwan. I'm going to open that one up. So in addition to the standard Library of Congress and VIAF and Wikidata and DBpedia and all the other places built in, we've also got linked open data Taiwan. And in this case, it's a classification. Let me make that a little larger. Uh, it's a topic with variants, classifications. So here, too, uh, we've got all of the linked data. And here, too, we've got the VIAF. Uh, we've got the Library of Congress. So uh, it's a wide variety of data that's brought in through the linked data. OK, before we continue, I'm going to just look at the chat and see if I missed anything here. Let me scroll down. OK, somebody asked, does the bib frame work URI could be enriched from external system like author and subject? Uh, the, the bib frame that we have is the standard bib frame format. If you want to start enriching something, you're best off having the JSON LD and linking your heading to whatever authority file you'd like. We stick to the standard, very strictly to the standard formats. Uh, I don't see any other questions here. Okay. So now, Let's try to stick to our topics here and see another way we can view the linked data. And this is going to be from a general publishing profile. So I have a set, which I made in advance, so we'd save time. We all know more or less how to make sets. Let's take a look at a set, a bibliographic set. So admin manage sets. Just to put everything in perspective, what are we doing now? We saw an example of the link data for the end user. We looked at two institutions, Hong Kong University of Science in Technology, a University of Wisconsin-Madison. Then we showed that you can get the link data multiple formats via an API. Now we're going to show that you can get it via a general publishing profile. 
So I have a set here called Linked Open Data Session March 14th, 2022. And it has two records in it. And the two records, which we already saw, the one with the Taiwan headings, which also has the Wikidata and the Library of Congress, etc., and the better data visualizations from Jonathan Swabish. So now instead of using APIs, I'm going to publish this with linked data. So let me get the name of this set because I'm going to use this in a moment. Okay, copy. So let's make on the spot here, let's make and publish a general publishing profile with linked data. Uh, so let's go to configure. Actually, we don't even need to go to configuration. Let's go to resources in publishing profiles. And I'm going to add a new general profile. It's 837. We're good on time. I'm going to call this LOD morning because we're going to have another session this evening and I'll call that LOD evening. And I'm not going to schedule it, although like every publishing profile, I've got a myriad of options to schedule it for. I'm going to run it on the spot. Then we're going to go grab that set we just saw. And here's the set. Then let's get, um, we're going to publish it on the bibliographic level. We're going to publish it in Mark 21 bibliographic format, but note, I could also publish it in RDA and BibFrame, among many others, but we're talking about, I could do the RDA that we saw via an API, I could do the BibFrame that we saw via an API, but I'm going to do Mark 21 bibliographic. I'm going to publish it to an FTP server. Those of you who are in our session a couple of months ago about, about the Ex Libre Secure FTP service, I'm going to send it there. I'm going to send it to a directory called Morning, so you'll know it's a brand new directory. It's not already there. Morning 2022-0314. And I'll also make that my file prefix. And next. Now comes the important part for the link data. In the enrichment section, I'm going to click linked data enrichment. And that's automatically going to do what the API did a moment ago on the data that gets published. Let's save and let's run it. So let me go find anything that includes morning and run it. There we go. Oh, we must have done this on a, on, a, on a different session back in 2020. So we're doing LOD morning and run. Publishing job was submitted successfully. Great. Now let's go take a look at it. Here I am in my um, secure FTP service. Let me actually, I'm going to get out and go in just to get a full refresh on that. FileZilla. Go to the site manager. Here's my site, and let's go take a look. Status is connecting. We can also see here job history. Okay, she ran and she completed successfully. Right now, 7.39. That's it's 840 local time, but this server is in Amsterdam, so that's our job. And here we are. Let's go take a look. I'm going to double click this. There we are. Morning 2022-0314. You can see that was made right now, 839 local time. Let's go in. Here's our file. I'm going to stick that somewhere here. Let me make a new folder here so we've got something clean i'll call it morning something clean a brand new directory and let's drag that in and go take a look at it again i know i could have had this all ready to go i want to show how 
straightforward the whole process is, which is why I'm doing it from scratch. So now that's downloading. We'll check the status here. There we go. Connecting, starting download, file transfer. Transfer successful. There we are. This is our file, which two seconds ago we created a publishing profile for and published. Let's untar and unzip that. Extract here. And extract here again. All right, let's go see this file which should have all the linked data. I'm gonna open that here and do Control Shift B. Or better yet, I will do macro, just so I can look at the file nicer. Plugins, pretty print, pretty print, there we go. That's a lot easier than Control Alt Shift and B. You gotta move your fingers all over. So here we are. We've got all of the link data inside. Here we've got the ISBN, for example. I'm gonna go paste that in somewhere. That's the ISBN for the one with page not found. Oh, I probably need the HTTP, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go on here. Uh, then we've got the one here with the Taiwan classifications. This is the 084, which is the unique classification for the Taiwan link data. There we are. Let's get another couple of examples. Let's go to the other record here. This one here. So here we've got another ISBN search. This is the data visualizations record. Boom. There we go. Better data visualizations. Direct link direct to the ISBN. Let's just get one more, perhaps on a subject. Well, let's take this WorldCat. Directly to WorldCat, you can go bring the record. Then a user can even, via WorldCat, see where it's available in his general geographic area. So all of these link data links that we saw before via the API and before that in the search results, we're seeing now in the published file from the general publishing profile. Let's just get a subject, then we'll move on. Here's some subjects, information, visualization. We can take it from WorldCat. We can take it from Library of Congress. Let's take it from Library of Congress. And then we're going to move on. OK. Another way that we can view linked data, I'm just going to close the PowerPoint because I get, uh, I always want to open it and then it really just wastes time. But everything I'm showing is in there. So there's three ways that inside Alma we can view the linked data also. Let's take the record where we've been using. Let me go to the set. And let's get that linked open data one. And members. So one way is in the metadata editor. I'm going to edit this record. We're talking now, how can we see linked data in Alma. Until now, we used an API and we used a publishing profile and we did a search in Primo for places that integrated linked data. Now we're staying in Alma to see how we can see the linked data. So one way is inside the metadata editor via the menu here called view related data. And we've got a link, view linked data. And that brings here in the right pane, which of course I can make bigger if those of you who were in our sessions on the new metadata editor know all the different ways we can navigate. So I've got all of the linked data links right here in the metadata editor. And of course they're linkable. I don't even have to right click, open a new tab. It automatically opens them in a new tab. 
Here I'll go for the authority names, opens a new tab, and there we are. So on the spot, while I'm editing a record, I can get the linked data and uh, consult the linked data. Let me release this record. And yes, let's go see in the, in the search results how we can do that. So another way we can see it is from here, we've got a link here to link data. So from the search results via the more actions, we've got the link here to the link data. And again, here we are, lower pane is showing the link data. But that's not all. We can also go to the full view here. And then we've got a link directly to the bib frame. And again, responding to that question that came in, can we put something else? This is following the official um, format as described here for bib frame. And then we've got the bib frame here. So that's three ways inside Alma that we can view the link data. Let me go see if there's any questions because now we're going to do something entirely different. Let me just see if there's any questions here. No questions. Is everybody still with me? Can just just send in, yes, we hear you in CUEOL. Okay. Yep. Someone said everything is great. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, okay, because, you know, when there's no questions, comments coming in, I get concerned. Maybe people aren't hearing me. Maybe people aren't seeing me. Only one person said they still hear me, actually. Anybody else still hear me and see me? Yep, someone else does, too. Okay, so two people at least, three people, four people. All right, everybody seems to see me. Okay, until now, we have extracted from Alma the linked data. Now we're going to do the opposite. We'll take linked data and put it into Alma. Again, until now, we used an API, a publishing profile, Primo search results, and the metadata editor and the Alma search results to view the linked data that we took from the record in Alma. Now we're going to take an external source and embed it into a record in Alma. And in the example here, we're going to use a cloud app. And the cloud app that we're going to use is called Alma Refine. And you can read more about this Alma Refine on your own. If you go to the developers network, and it's a very nice app. Um, those of you who are in the cloud app sessions, we did a couple of cloud app sessions. I showed this also. Uh, so here, if you come to the developers network and you go to the blog and you write Alma Refine Cloud App, one of our colleagues here um, wrote some blogs about it. I'm just going to write Alma Refine Cloud. That should cover. So we've got how to use the Alma Refine Cloud App for Wikidata. Uh, how to use it for GND. GND is the German National Names Authority, German National Authority file, and in general, how to install and use the Alma Refine Cloud app. And let's go take a look at that. What happened to my metadata editor? I guess I closed it by accident. Okay, no big deal. We'll just pop right back in. So. Uh, we're going to take a record now. We can take several records because we can do it on a set. We can do it on a set or we can do it one at a time on records from the search results. However, that is still being developed in the new metadata editor. Itai, when is the part about updating records not via a set in the new metadata editor going to be supported with this cloud app? Uh, it's May release, if I remember correctly. May release. Okay. Uh, so there's two ways that it's possible to update. I'm going to show via a set. It's also possible directly on the record in May. When I say directly on the record, I mean one record at a time 
as opposed to a set. Let's do a search here. Let's do a keyword search, for example, for Scovell and Sandberg. They're the co-authors of Lean In, Woman Work, The Will to Lead. Uh, and let's save these as a set. So I will say save and filter query. And I'll call this Morning Scovell Sandberg. Morning Scovell Sandberg. Great. Private. I won't even make it private. Logical. It's an all titles set. Now let's look at this set. And take note. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do members. Results. Now take note. And in fact, I'm going to take a picture. Uh, my 100 field here has only a subfield A. Boom. This one here, because it's going to change via the app. Okay. Then, um, also my 600 only has a subfield A, but I'm going to play around with the 100. Let's look at the other record. This, oh, this one's already got the, the I'm going to get rid of those subfield ones. Edit. Because I want to show how we can add them automatically. We can add a subfield one or a subfield zero. We'll see in a moment. But it's automated. That's the main point here. 853. I think we're going to have just enough time here. Uh, let me edit this. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of that subfield. Uh, that's not another subfield. That's a alternate graphic representation. Uh, and no other fields have it. Everything's good. Save. Okay, I'm going to take another paint here. And I'm going to take a picture of this record as well. So that's done. I will release it. Hide the metadata editor. And now let's take a look at this one. And here also, function print screen, let's take a picture of our 100 field before. And you can see here, I only have a subfield A. Now, we've got a cloud app. I've already got the cloud app installed, going to my cloud app center. And here is the Alma Refine Cloud app. Did I pass it? I could actually just do a search. That would be a lot easier. There we are. Okay, I'm going to open. Now, there's a very basic uh, configuration here where I can say, for example, which, let's make this larger. Nice. So I can say, for example, which refined services do I want to use? Uh, BNF is from the French authority files. The geo name's Getty. GND, that's the German one. Sudoc, that's uh, also uh, Europe. And Wikidata. I, I can add my own within limits. And I can also determine, though I'm not going to go into all the details of this cloud app, which fields I want to do this on. Now, I'm in the search results right now, and it says refine the two records on this page. Let me show that again. I have two records on my page right now. If I open this, ref oh, I didn't spell Alma right. Fine. Okay. Open. So one option is to select specific records. I'm going to take both of these records. Now I'm trying this out, even though it's not officially supported yet, but <laughs> let's see the worst that's going to happen. If not, I'll run it on a set. 
Then I'm going to define which one I want to use. I'm going to do the wiki data. Then I'm going to begin refining. So here it says retrieving refinements. It's looking. So it finds Sheryl Sandberg in my 100 field because I've defined here that I want to refine the 100 field and I want to put my URI in a subfield one. Then I'm going to select the refinement. So now it went to Wikidata and it looked for all of the different um, headings, uh, entries, entries that I could use to refine my record. I'm not going to take a specific work, but I could have a, li a work, a link to a specific work. Uh, let's take this one. So we leaned in. Now what? That actually sounds quite interesting. Uh, and here too, I can do whatever I want. I'll do the expansion of multipotent. Actually, no, I'll do them both. So we leaned in. Now what? And save. So now it's 100% done. It updated these records. It says successfully updated these records. There was a screen that came up. Let's go take a look and see what happened. Here's my first one. Look at that. Beautiful. It added the subfield one. If we go back to my picture, there is no subfield one. But now, a moment ago, it added this automatically to the record. So now we did the exact opposite. Until now, we were taking the data from Alma, the link data, bringing it out. Now we took it from out and brought it right into Alma. If I were to go into the metadata editor here, I could also see that if I did view related data view versions, view related data view versions, This one here, if I view, does not have it. Here, it does have it. I'm going to restore, though. Just uh, I'll just get rid of this manually for later. So it automatically added it. Let's take a look at the other one. We still have two minutes left. No, I don't want to view the, view the related, but thank you for asking. And... Let's hide the metadata editor. Look at our second record here as well. Let's go in. And again, it added a subfield one with a link that I chose. And if we look here, we see I didn't have a subfield one before. Okay, 8.59 local time. Let's see if there's any questions or comments from anybody looking in the chat here. I don't see any questions or comments. Okay, so thanks everybody for joining. Ita, you want to add anything before we finally close? Do the final closure? Well, I think uh, it's very important to understand it. As I said, it's we're in a journey and uh, we are full power moving forward. And Full again, steam ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Joel, for all the details. Okay, thanks everybody for joining. As usual, we will be posting the recording to our YouTube channel and to our education and webinars page, and we'll be sending out information on that as well. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you.